Yeah. It's your man, Diggy Smalls, from the Chaos Crew. The best commentator on all of YouTube. Yeah, I said it, but you know I'm right. Just like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my sights. What's going down, everybody? It's your man, Pro Diggy, from the Chaos Crew, but you can call me Diggy if you like. And welcome to part two of my homeless commentary. But before we get into that, just so I could be like every other YouTuber, I'm going to make sure that I let you guys know this. For those of you that don't know, Robert Bowling, a.k.a. 402, a.k.a. Stealth Clown, a.k.a. Uh, fucking community manager or uh, strategist of some sort or whatever the fuck his title was over at Activision Infinity Ward or whatever, has officially retired or resigned or quit or whatever the fuck. So for those of you that don't know, now you know. And if you have any complaints, make sure that you send them to um, Infinity Ward now. Follow them on Twitter and send all the bullshit to them. Anyway, let's uh, get into the point of what we're here for. Hey, chat! Who? Um, this is going to be uh, part two of the homeless commentary, so I'm going to pick up where I left off. For those of you that didn't see part one, I'm going to put, you know, a little fucking annotation thing at the end of the video uh, or whatever, which kind of defeats the purpose because then you have to get to the end uh, to go back to that first commentary. So it's kind of like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory where you have to go forward to go back. So let's press on. But anyway, um, where we left off was where I uh, got kicked out of Caitlin's house after I had gotten my job and they didn't want to give me any more time. So here we go. I get kicked out of Caitlin's house and uh, basically, of course, I lost my job because I was too busy trying to figure out where the fuck I was going to go, what I was going to do, etc. So I didn't report into work. You know, I mean, what am I going to do there? Um, I didn't have anywhere to like take a shower necessarily or, you know, do my laundry or anything like that. So I was kind of like SOL. But uh, basically what I did was the first night I actually had a friend that was uh, down here for a pool tournament, and previous to this, he had he was living out here, and he had been on some hard times when I had my house, and I let him stay at my place a little bit here and there, and hooked him up with some some money sometimes and things like that or whatever two piece, uh, and uh, he was out here for a uh, a pool tournament. And I told him my situation everything. He's like, look, man, you know, I got this hotel room for another night. And I don't know what this guy's doing and how he didn't see me. Prius, sit down. So he was out here and he's like, look, man, you know, I mean, I only got it for one more night. But you could at least stay there. Maybe try and think of something else that you can do or whatever. So you're not just like straight out on the street or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool, man. I appreciate that. I stayed there that night. And then, you know, he had to go and everything. Um, so basically the next, I think, like night or two, I stayed in my truck and was trying to figure shit out. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, my friend owns a pool hall in Van Nuys called Good Times, and what I was doing is I was kind of hanging out there as much as I could and stuff, and, uh, you know, then I'd go, like, sleep in my truck or whatever, and I had talked to, to my friend, and I'd let him know the situation and everything, and he was like, look, you know, I'll do what I can for you. Maybe I'll let you work a little bit, make a couple of bucks. You know, um, when we close down, you could stay here a little if you want instead of staying in your truck and everything. And I also had a friend that I had known since I was like six who was uh, living with his dad at the time. And his dad knew me, of course, and everything. We knew each other since we were six. Um, so he would let me stay at his house a little here, a little there. But I didn't want to stay too much because I didn't want to overstay my welcome and make it where I couldn't stay at certain times when maybe it was more important or whatever. So, um, you know, I would stay there like a day or two or something like that, take a shower, do some laundry stuff like that. And then I would kind of go from there to like maybe the pool hall or something and you know, I tried to make it where I could balance out everything and stuff to where I didn't get annoying to anybody and, like, lose one of those, like, fortunate places I had to be able to, like, you know, hang out or, you know, make sure that I wasn't just in my truck the whole time and stuff. So that was that was nice, and I was very lucky in that aspect to be able to have, um, you know, friends and things like that that could help me out here and there. Um, so I wasn't, it wasn't quite as bad as it could have been where I was, like, legitimately sleeping on, like, a sidewalk and stuff, you know, because I had my truck, I had my friend with the pool hall, I had my friend that I had known since I was six and things like that, so that really did help a lot, and I was very fortunate. Um, for those of you that asked as far as, um, you know, why I didn't stay with my mom or my dad and his friends or uh, my grandparents or something like that, uh, basically, you know, my dad was staying with his friends, and his friends knew me, of course, you know, I was his son, but I didn't want to, like make it where I kind of imposed on them to the point where two piece uh, where I kind of wore out his welcome also you know to me it was more important that my dad had a place to stay more so than me because I'm young and I can figure it out he was older and you know he has like back problems and, sh and you know it's just I just didn't want to like fuck up a good thing that he had going um, as far as staying with my grandparents they had recently moved to Washington 
And I didn't want to move to Washington unless it was absolutely necessary. So I decided that I was going to kind of tough it out and try and figure it out before I, you know, took a drastic measure such as that and moved like two states away from where I was born and raised and where I wanted to be at. Um, and then as far as my mom goes, you have to understand the timeline here. It was basically about a year and a half to two years after she had left where we lost the house and were homeless and such. And by that time, she had a new boyfriend. The boyfriend at the time had some like business to handle in uh, in like Mexico, two piece, uh, and oh here comes another two piece, uh, and then this faggot sitting in the corner, uh, with a ghillie suit like a queer, uh, but um, you know, I didn't want to move to Mexico, and you know he had business out there, so she was out there with him for a little while and stuff, so that wasn't gonna happen, and there was a host migration here, so I just kind of tried to edit that a little bit, but um. I just didn't really have too many choices. Two-piece? Uh, fuck that, Snacks. I'm the king of the two-pieces. What? Um, so, basically, that was kind of like where it was, and those were the decisions that I made. But to be honest, I wouldn't change anything like that for the world. Um, it made me who I am today, going through all of those things. And another thing is, the, the little bit of money that I did make here and there and such... I would actually use to play in pool tournaments and maybe make like 100, 150 bucks here and there. I would also use that money to gamble with people. And let me tell you something, like, you don't know what being a man is until you fucking gamble on your last little bit of money that will be for like food or gas or cigarettes or something really important to you. Like, that will put hair on your chest and balls without a fucking doubt. And it also made me a seasoned gambler. Like, we could play $100 a rack and it doesn't even fucking... Like, it doesn't even make my heart rate increase anymore because of shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, it just made me a seasoned gambler, and it just doesn't bother me anymore. Um, but anyway, so that's basically the whole homeless thing. Um, I'll, I'll kind of end it with basically about two to three months after this had all started, my mom came back from Mexico. Um, she got a place and everything and said I could come stay with her until like, you know, so I can get on my feet and stuff. So I went and I moved in with my mom, and... You know, over some time, I got back on my feet, played some pool for a living, made a couple of bucks here and there, things like that, et cetera, et cetera, and ended up getting back on my feet. And like I said, I wouldn't change it for anything. I don't resent anybody for it because that hard time definitely shaped part of me as being an adult and made me who I am today. At least a lot of that made me who I am today, plus a lot of other things that happened in my life and such. And I think I turned out pretty fucking good. I'm responsible, I'm good with money, and I know what it's like to have everything and then have nothing. And it makes me a very humble person. So for those of you out there, <clears throat> excuse me, for those of you that out there that think that life's tough right now, kind of examine it and realize that maybe it's not as tough as you think and be thankful for what you do have. You know what I mean? But that's enough philosophy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This has been your man Pro Diggy from the motherfucking Chaos Crew, but you can call me Diggy if you like. Don't forget, as always, to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my sights.